All right, YouTube. Um, this is part two. I had to kind of turn that off because the conversation was actually a lot, of, a little bit longer than, than I anticipated it to be. Um, very nice people. They just um, moved down here from New York, and um, yeah, some good conversation going on. But anyhow, what was I talking about? Um, I don't even remember what I was talking about now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of me coming back on was because I guess I was determined that I was going to finish vlogging about whatever I was vlogging about. But um, so basically about my day, I went to the place. Oh, oh, the, it didn't. Turn, it wasn't what I expected. I went there with the attitude of, oh, I really don't want to go here, and that I'm just going because um, I'm going to do this as a trial run for the interview on Monday. So I'll be getting my clothes together and seeing how I come off and blah 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 and blah 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 blah. And it just turned out that I realized that nothing actually fit me. My clothes didn't fit. Everything was still too tight or it was just tacky. Where I was trying to put together something that was either that looked too fancy with something that was business casual and it just was just tacky. And I just got frustrated. And, you know, I was like, you know what? I know I can fit this big old t shirt. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on. So I put on my t shirt, put on the same old, like, silver sandals that I'm walking around in all the time. And I grabbed, and I wasn't bringing anything with me because I was going for the sole purpose of going in there to um, get on the phone, make the sales, and get out. And if I found that I did, I was coming in with a no-nonsense attitude. If I found that I didn't make any sales, like within the first hour, I was leaving. <laughs> and um, so I went in, and like I said, you know, at first, you know, I was all the positive attitude. I wanted to have a positive attitude. I wanted to be like... Um, you know, using it as a practice run, but then when I realized I didn't even have clothes to wear, I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. I just need to make some money, forget about all that other stuff. So I went and, you know, he was asking me, do you have any experience? Um, you know, and I was like, no. <laughs> you know, I just wanna get off on the phone, no. No experience, no nothing. You know, are you working now? No. <laughs> and, you know, just just keep it short. No, I, you know, no, I'm not working right now. Any questions? If I get if I make sales today, will I get paid today? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, will I get paid Monday? No. Um, will we see what we can do? So, so that's it. I didn't make any sales. I was only there for like an hour. Got a couple good clothes in. Um, so it looks like it might be pretty good. They did offer night positions, which is great. So I will be doing that during. Hopefully, y'all can hear me. I will be doing that during the evening. Um, I'll be doing that during the evening. So. You know, during the day, I can still run off to my interview. I'm a little, maybe a little disappointed because, oh, it was a great experience. I'm glad that I, I'm remembering it now because I just really got sidetracked just now. But, um, but yeah, it was really a good experience because, you know, that means that I'm not doing anything at night. Anyhow, as y'all can clearly see, because I'm not doing anything but vlogging at night and complaining about, you know, not having a job. So, hey, now at least I have somewhere to go, people to see, things to do, places to be. So I'm going to do that during the evening and during the day. I am going to the interview. That interview is all the way in Miami. The only sad thing about it is that I was probably hoping that um, I could hang out the rest of the day in Miami because I love Miami. So much going on there. But in order for me to get back and be on time, and so forth and so on, uh, I would not be able to stay and hang out in Miami like I would like to. So um, the other portion of that was, oh, about the cool people. Um, like I said, I think the people that run the things behind the desk, I think they have to be kind of business, so they terse, and so I was kind of terse too. But the guy that actually did the interviewing um, for me, I think he kind of picked up on how I was, and he probably saw that I was just hungry <laughs> and, you know, that... Um, so he knew that I just wanted to and needed to get on the phone and you know, he empathized with that and just kind of set me up. And so he set me with this girl and he was considerate. Oh my gosh, he was considerate because he was just like, I just want to make sure I find the right match because he could feel that my vibe was kind of strong, you know. So he was trying to find somebody that would be cool. He did find um, this one girl and she was cool. She was very nice, very personable. Um, and professional from what I can see so far. Everybody seemed that way so far, but on the phone, when I was calling, they weren't, and maybe they were short like that because same reason that I was short, because right now they're hungry and they need money, so they're trying to get, you know, either you're coming in or you're not coming in to interview, you know. So, so that's kind of how that went. So you gotta kind of understand on both ways. You know, I'm glad that he understood that I was hungry, but it didn't matter to me either way, because they're not paying me unless I make a sale anyhow. So, you know, whatever. Um, Again, good people. When I walked in, um, 
Then there was this guy, I had my big old bag. Oh, I need to show this to one of the YouTubers that bought a big Victoria's Secret bag from, um, from some thrift store somewhere. But, but, um, oh, the, I had my big old bag in the cubicle next to me. And a guy came in, he needed a seat, so he took it. And I was like, oh, do you need me to move this? And he was just like, oh, no, no, you know, I'm not as mean as I look. And actually, that broke the ice. He knew how to break the ice, you know? And that's something that I need how to learn how to do. I've been through so much, but he knew how to break the ice. And I was like, you know, and I was like, oh, that was so nice of him, you know? Because I looked at him, and when I looked at him, you know, he has long hair, he's tall and kind of gangly. And so, you know, he, he was cool. I like that. And then on top of that, he went out of his way. Like, every time I got um, my calls, T.O. Um, you know, I was like pacing because I was like, I want my money, you know. But, you know, he came to me and he made it a point to lean into me and whisper in my ear, you know, you sound right. But, you know, people say that to me all the time. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, if it ain't making money, it ain't really making no sense. Literally, you know, ain't making no dollars either. So, you know, I'm listening. And then the guy, I guess he really wants to loosen me up. So, and at first I'm a little scared because I'm just like, um, he asked me, you know, do I live? And, you know, where do I live? And I was just like, <laughs> you know, I don't like questions like that. You know, he asked me where do I live, and I was like, um, you know, I live around here, not too far. And then he was like, the reason that he asked is that he lives, and he told me where he lives. And then he was like, um, because I don't always catch the bus; sometimes I drive. And you know, part of me, like I said, I always have my creepy antennas on because I'm so freaking open, and because I'm a person that doesn't have anything that people will sometimes see that weakness and be like vultures and I really don't want no stupidity because like I said even when I post stuff online and things like that people come to me with um, with stuff that's less than what I'm posting you know so um, you know I don't want to become it that way so you know he was and then he told me why he was very open about why and whatever but I'm thinking to myself you know I don't need no ride <laughs> you know what I mean so but he even even after those shutdowns like that, he still came back, you know, in a way again that wasn't um, that was that was open where it would have been creepy if he just took me to the side and was like, you oh, know, such and such and such. But you know, he said it in front of everybody, you know, so that made me feel comfortable. And then he asked me to step outside, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to step outside. I just got here for one, and then two, you know, this man is on my call, <laughs> and I want to see what happens, you know, and so. Um, So what ended up happening was, um, and I need to make sure I document that call because in case it does pan out, I want my money. But um, so what happened from there, he asked me to step outside and at first I really didn't want to because like I said, I'm listening to the call, I just got there, I don't want to make a bad impression. But the reality is where the reality is that um, I don't have, you know, that and this is reality in any telling marketing place. You are pretty much, you know, on your own. You know what I'm saying? And they don't want to pay you this and the other, but they treat you like, and my daddy's about to go there, they treat you like um, you have to answer to for everything that you do. Um, I don't know if you can like, find a place to plug in real quick, but, but, I'm going to duck down real quick. All right, so hopefully this works because my battery is really my dead. Is it working? Is it working? I don't think it's working. No, it's not working. Nope, it's not working, but I'm going to make this quick. But anyhow, so, you know, he takes me outside. And I don't know how we got talking about it. I probably started because I always start the conversations that are controversial as far as your history, your past, what did you used to do, where you're from. And, you know, somehow it came out that he got out of jail. For, no, I, I know what I asked him. I said, why are you so nice? You know, because I felt like he was a nice person, but I also felt like there was some room for creepiness. You know, and then he started to tell me some of his story. He had been in jail for 12 years. I what he did. Of course, he wasn't comfortable sharing that with me quite yet. And you know, I respected that. Um, but my thing is that, you know, everybody needs to heal. There's a healing process. 
And I think that's why the world is so fucked up now, because everybody's trying to hide everything, you know? They're trying to hide stuff, you know, to impress other people, but everybody got shit, you know what I'm saying? And some of the shit that we're trying to hide is stuff that, that somebody abused us with. Like, with me, I was abused by the system. I've never hidden that, you know, because I don't ever want to be ashamed of anything about me because I love who I am. But anyways, my time is getting low, and um, I need to run, so that's what I'm going to do. Love y'all.